Okay, everybody. Well, yesterday we took a look at GCF and how we could find the GCF of not only numbers but of monomials and polynomials. And so today we're going to use that information and start factoring um, polynomials, making them break apart, take a look where they came from. Um, there's a lot of information here. I want you to take notes. There's five questions that I want you to answer along the way. Um, and if we do go a little long, I do apologize. Um, but this is a lot of good information that you need to get because as we move forward with, uh, with factoring our polynomials, uh, this is the first method you will try every time. Good students factor first. I want you to remember that. Good students always try to factor out the polynomial to make life easier. It makes the polynomial smaller. That will make more sense to you in a little bit. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want you to take a look at x plus 3 times x plus 5. And I taught you the box method where we had x plus 5 and x plus 3. I think you would agree that we could have also written this, and this is a new method that you might want to try, that the x is multiplying both the x and the 3. The x is multiplying both the x and the 3. I just break out this x and multiply it here. This 5 is multiplying the x, and this 5 is multiplying the 3. This 5 is multiplying the x and multiplying the 3. And so, just the way we did with the box method, x times x, x squared, x times 3, 3x, 5 times x, 5x, and 5 times 3, 15. Combine like terms, and we get an answer. And it's just the same as you did with the box method. So you can practice this way if you like. But what we're going to learn today is how to take this polynomial and go backwards. How are we going to go from here to something that looks like that? And that's the goal of today's lesson. And there's lots of different methods to do that. The first method is just by finding G GCF. Okay, so if we take a look at here, we find that the GCF of 4x squared and 3x is, well, there's no GCF of 4 and 3 other than 1. x squared and x is x, parentheses. Now we've reduced this by 1x, so it's 4x. We've reduced this by 1x, so that's just minus 3. And we can check our answer. x times 4x is... 4x squared, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. And we've successfully factored our first polynomial. Okay, let's take a look here. We have a 10, a 20, and a 5. And we'll talk about the signs later, but we're just talking about the absolute value of the numbers. So the GCF of the numbers is 5. And as we learned yesterday, we're going to find the lowest exponent. The lowest exponent here is x. And now 5 times what gives me 10? 2. Five, x times what gives me x cubed? x squared plus 4. 4 times 5 gives me my 20. Reduce this by an x. So I have x times x gives me my x squared minus 1. Do not forget that 1. 5x times negative 1 gives me negative 5x. And we are done. Later on, I'll teach you how to check to see if you can factor this. But at this point in your lessons, you don't know that. So we'll just stop right here. So each time you're going to find the GCF, you're going to pull that GCF out. And then you're going to reduce the monomials by that factor. Then when we're done, we're going to multiply back just to check out work very quickly. What I'd like you to do now is copy down these two questions, 1 and 2, and be prepared to bring them into class tomorrow and show me that you understand this. Okay? And so you can pause the video right here and copy that. All right. What happens if they give me my GCF and it's already as a binomial? already as a binomial. Well, let's take a quick look. Well, when we looked here, we have a binomial of x plus 3. 
And what is the x plus 3 multiplying? Well, it's multiplying x and 5. x and 5. So using that bit of information, we know this is the same as 7 minus 2x times x minus 3. And if you don't believe me, you can do the box method, you can do the FOIL method, you can use the breakout method I just showed you, and then you can multiply these and see if you get the exact same answer. But this 7 is multiplying all of this, and this 2 is multiplying all of this, this 7 is multiplying all of this, this negative 2 is multiplying all of this, and so you can see they're the same. So again, we check that we have an exact same binomial. I have y squared plus 4. And now I can multiply that by negative y. What do I have here? Well, there's nothing written here. I'm not going to write nothing because this is certainly multiplying something. What's that unknown number that we don't write? The number that's in front of the x. Absolutely, it's a 1. So we write plus 1. Now if some of you decided that you didn't want to write it like that, but you wanted to keep that, would that be the same? Absolutely, this is negative y plus 1 and this is 1 minus y. Great. So, I want you to try these two problems. And that will be 3 and 4. And hopefully those will be very quick for you. And you can also be prepared to turn those in tomorrow. Go ahead, pause. There you go. Okay, what if I see this? I have x plus 1 and x plus 3. Can I write that like this? Well, I hope that you say no, because this binomial is not the same as this binomial. No, okay? All right, moving on. Things get a little more complicated here. Factoring by grouping. So we look and we say, okay, do I have a GCF here? I don't have a GCF. Three works here, three works here. And it doesn't work here. I, I don't have an A. So there's nothing there to factor. So factoring by grouping says, well, what happens if I just took two of these? What happens if I rewrote this as 12 a to the third minus 9a squared plus 20a minus 15? Have I changed the value of this equation? I'm still adding 20a and still adding negative 15, but now perhaps I can find GCFs. Is there a GCF of 12 and 9? Well, we know that is. Three. Is there a GCF of a cubed and a squared? Hopefully by now you see that is a squared. So we have three times four. I've got a squared, so this is a minus three times nine. Three times three, sorry, gives me nine, and then a squared, so it just leaves me like that. And I'm running out of room, I'm sorry. And so now I'm going to find the GCF here of 20 and 15, which is 5. It leaves me with a 5 times 4 is 20. It leaves me with a A. 5 times 4, A gives me 20A. Minus 5 times 5 into 15 is 3. And all of a sudden, now I have a binomial and a binomial. And so we can rewrite that, 3a squared plus 5 times 4a minus 3. Here, again, we look, we think about dividing this up, but even that doesn't do me any good. I'm just left with that. So sometimes they're tricky. Sometimes we need to rewrite this, 8x squared plus 3x, just change the order, and 
when I've changed the order, all of a sudden now it looks like, well, I can find the GCF of those two. GCF of 2x cubed and 4x squared is 2x squared plus 4 plus GCF of 3 and 12 is 3 x whoops I think I made a mistake here I think that's supposed to be a plus plus 4 Looks something like that and then obviously we can rewrite it all right one more thing we need to do before we wrap up this evening and that's deal with opposites Oh, actually, I have to give you one more assignment. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is assignment number five, and hopefully this should be pretty straightforward for you, and we'll be ready to go over these in class tomorrow. So the last one we have to take a look at is opposites. And so we're going to use the grouping method. We have a three. Lowest exponent here is x squared. So here that's x minus five, and over here we have lowest is 2, 5, minus x. And we look and we say, oh my gosh, I am so close. But that's not quite the same. x minus 5 and 5 minus x are not identical. But what happens if I, instead of saying plus 2, I said, OK, I'm going to use a negative GCF and say minus 2. Well, minus 2 times what will give me positive 10? Negative 5. Minus 2 times what will give me negative 2x? x. And now all of a sudden, I have binomials that look the same. And so then it's just a simple 3x squared minus 2 times x minus 5. And remember, the easiest way to check to see if you factored correctly. Box method, 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. Multiply everything through, 3x cubed minus 2x minus 15x squared plus 10. Does everything look the same? So your final step, if you truly want to make sure you've got the right answer, is to multiply it back out, and you should always get the same answer. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that makes a lot of sense. We'll have plenty of time in class to practice tomorrow, and good night.